can kind of begin to um, see the energy is kind of coming back to the city. There's uh, everyone is is coming back from holiday break, and uh, we're all like, okay, we have to be uh, responsible adults again, and so we have tasks we have to do, and work, and classes, and responsibility. Uh, and so usually uh, the first of the year with it kind of comes with this idea of like, okay, I'm thinking about. Uh, 2022, how, how do I want to kind of approach the year uh, personally, you know, maybe from a work standpoint or from a school standpoint, we just kind of, uh, it, it, for whatever reason, the new year kind of lends itself towards this idea of thinking about um, how do I uh, maybe achieve some things or how do I um, kind of be better in this particular area and how do I, how do, I do these types of things. And, and, and so here's um, what we want to do really over the next few weeks together, kind of leading us up to um, Easter is we want to kind of walk through this idea of spiritual formation. So what what is spiritual formation? Uh, why is it important? Uh, what does it um, what does it look like? Uh, I, I think if anything, if I'm really thinking over the last two years um, with just kind of COVID and, and the, the type of isolation that all of us experience in this season, uh, I think in a lot of ways, um, at least for me, I don't know if this is true for you, but it really um, it really exposed some formation issues uh, for me, and, and then even even a lot of people that I'm talking to in terms of like, hey, this thing hit, and not not that any of us could be you know ultimately prepared, but this thing hit, and it was like I was not prepared for this. And, and, and that was kind of collectively across the board, like Christian, non-Christian, like no matter where you're kind of on that spectrum, it was like, oh, wow. And so I kind of sat back and was like, man, we, I, myself included, uh, we have a formation problem, uh, a spiritual formation problem. And, and so here's what we're gonna do um, this morning. I want to, um, let me give a definition for spiritual formation, and then we'll kind of break into some of these more specific questions uh, as we go. So here's the definition that we're gonna be working for uh, working towards, if you're, you're going to write this down, it'll be on the screen. Uh, Robert Mulholland gives this. I think it's a very precise and clear definition of spiritual formation. He says this, uh, spiritual formation uh, is a process of being formed in the image of Christ for the sake of others. So if we're, we're kind of coming around this idea of spiritual formation. He says, it's a process of being formed in the image of Christ. It's taking us to somewhere for the sake of others. Okay, so that's the definition. Here's the primary question that I want us to be thinking about as it's driving us through this series. Because what I don't want, now depending on your kind of um, religious background, church background, non-church background, uh, you could be asking yourself and thinking through all kinds of various lenses as we're talking about spiritual formation. And, and so I don't want you to approach this series um, thinking, uh, primarily thinking task-oriented. The question I don't want you to ask is, how do I become a better, a better Bible reader? The, the question I don't want you to ask primarily is, is, how do I be a person who more faithfully prays? How, how do I be a more um, generous giver? A, a, am I a faithful friend living in authentic and honest community uh, with other people? A, am I sharing the gospel with people in my workplace or at my, in my class, in my dorm, in my apartment? Uh, in, in my home, I don't want you, as we're thinking about spiritual formation, I don't want you primarily thinking through the lens of a task as a check this, check this, check this, check this. Here's spiritual formation is not primarily interested. I want you to hear this, focus in, is not primary, primarily interested in answering those types of questions, although it, it deals with those questions. The question that spiritual formation primarily deals with, and this will, this will carry us on through the whole series, is not what am I doing, but who am I becoming? See, that's the, that's the question that is posed in front of us. Not Bible, or better Bible reader, Bible prayer, like all, all these kind of things, they're all important. The really the question that like the core issue that we have to get down to is what type of person am I becoming? What type of community, this is what I think about leading this church, what type of community are we becoming? See, that's the question, is it not? You can go through life and, and think, oh, I wanna have this ability down and this skill down and, and this kind of thing down, and, and, and that's okay. It's just not the most important question. 
The most important question that you should be dealing with is who am I becoming? And so this is, this is what we're going to be looking at. What type of person am I becoming? It's, it's not, again, about Bible reading or trustful friend or passionate evangelizer. It's, it's really, am I becoming more and more like Jesus? Am I being, the question is, am I being conformed into the image of Christ? This is what we do as a people committed to the way of Jesus. We say, okay, is this thing that I'm participating in, this thing that I'm committing myself to, this community that I'm committing myself to, this way of life that I'm, I'm seeking to live, is it more and more conforming me to the image of Christ or is it not? Is it deforming me from the image of Christ? This is the, the question that we are seeking to answer. Look how look what Paul says. This is Ephesians chapter four. Uh, Yasmin read this. Um, he hits it right on. So starting at verse 13, so Paul's an early leader in the church, used to be a persecutor of the church, and now it, uh, has become a leader in the church, wrote the majority of the, the letters that you see in the New Testament. Look what he wrote here, Ephesians 4, 13 through 16. He says, until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, and he says this, he says, growing into maturity with a stature measured my measured by my ability to read the Bible, right? He, he, he says, growing into maturity with a stature measured by how, how eloquently I can pray, how much I give, how much I rest, how good of a friend I am. No, no, he says, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. See, the measure by which we assess the type of person I'm becoming is, is not necessarily by others, although it's helpful to be, really, really helpful to be in community with other people. The, the, really, the question is, am I growing in maturity as measured by the person of Christ? Am I being conformed more and more into his image? He goes on. He says, then we'll no longer be like little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness and the techniques of deceit. Right, so he's addressing kind of this, uh, honestly, I read this thinking about kind of the cultural norm of being kind of tossed back and forth, right? Maybe that's where you're at currently, or you were there, or you have friends that are there. And there's like here, and now they're here, and now they're here. And Paul, Paul is saying, no, we're we gonna work towards maturity as measured by Jesus, so we're not thrown all over the place. He says, but speaking truth, speaking the truth in love, let us, here it is again, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. So spiritual formation, the, 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 the idea of who am I becoming is, is really this thought of, am I growing and maturing and maturing more into the image of Christ? This is what we're after. This is what Paul is saying. He goes on, he says, from him, the whole body, that, this is the, the body, all of us collectively, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up of itself by love, uh, itself up in love by the proper working of each individual spirit. And so we're thinking about, so this is what I want you to think about is we're kind of working, beginning to work this process out over the next few weeks together, is I want you addressing the idea that um, when we're talking about maybe this particular kind of habit that we're gonna talk about, like maybe you call it spiritual discipline, right? But as we're talking about that, or we're talking about community, or we're talking about some of these kind of areas, what I want you to think in your head is I want you to think, okay, if I participate in this, if I give myself over to this, will this make me more and more into the image of Jesus? Who am I becoming? This is, this is the direction that we're moving. I had a seminary professor, um, he said, uh, spiritual disciplines without direction is drudgery. Such a classic like seminary you know, thing. But, but what he meant by that is, it, it, like you understand kind of where you're going and, and as you're working towards this image of Christ, it, it makes this idea of spiritual formation come alive. And, and you're moving um, in, a, uh, in a particular 
direction. Okay, so that's the question that we're dealing with. Let's look back at our definition. So let's look back at our working definition um, that, that we have here. So it says spiritual formation is a process of being formed into the image of Christ, a little bit of what we just dealt with, for the sake of others. It's a process of being formed into the image of Christ for the sake of others. So here's a couple of questions that we're gonna address. Uh, you can write those down as we go. Here's, here's number one. Uh, what makes spiritual formation so difficult? Uh, chances are, if I went across the room and, and, and we kind of were looking at spiritual formation and, and really fleshed it out and, and you had a kind of complete idea of what that looks like, most likely all of us in the room would probably in, in multiple ways struggle with spiritual formation and, and have some areas where we're seeking to grow. Well, why is that, um, why is that the case? Well, one of the really just important um, things to think about is this idea of spiritual formation as a process as a process. Now, um, Peter said in 2 Peter 1, five through six, listen to what he says here. He says, for this reason, make ever, every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, and endurance with godliness. Now, here's the thing about spiritual formation that makes it so tricky. Spiritual formation uh, works against the kind of cultural norm of, of this kind of like feeling of instant gratification. It, it works against the norm of, of things just kind of coming easy to us. Like, like, let's think about it kind of just our cultural moment. You know, we don't need to think about anyone else. Let's just think about our cultural moment 2022. We have been wired and formed in such a way that like instant gratification is pretty much our base level like operating system, is it not? I mean, if, if listen, I can sit on my couch in my pajamas and order something on Amazon and it be at, at, at my door in two hours. If I'm hungry, I can get on Uber Eats because they keep sending me coupons and I can order something, right? I can get a, um, a spicy pad thai from Tai Tai Kitchen, and it can be at, at my door within a matter of like 30 minutes. Can it not? Like, like if I want to watch the newest movie, I, I can go online legally, <laughs> go online. I can go to my Apple movies, I can, I can look at it, I can, right? It's like, you, I, I, can, I, can, I can sit there and get all of this at an instant. New album, Apple Music, look it up, there it is. Listen to it right there. We've been, we've been wired in such a way that for a lot of us, this, this idea of spiritual formation as a process is so difficult because it takes time and it takes a significant amount of effort. And that's hard. Like that, that's hard. We, we want to quickly kind of uh, give up on something um, because it's not instant. It's, it's not quick. This is, why, um, this is why so many people give up on exercise so quickly, right? No matter how many times uh, people commit first of the year, it's like, I'm going to, you know, eat well and drink less and, you know, uh, run and exercise and, and do all that stuff. It's like, listen, you can leave this place. You can lace up a pair of tennis shoes. If you're out of shape, you can lace up a pair of tennis shoes. You can go outside and run. It's like 21, be ready, right? You won't feel your face. You can go run three miles, come back, and you're still gonna be out of shape. It, it is, a, it is a, like a, a, a process of, of growth. And so spiritual formation is very, 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 very similar to that. Like, it, it takes time. Kenneth um, Leach, he's an, an Anglican writer, says this, kind of identifying the, the moment that we're in. It says, in the years since the 1960s, we have seen that kind of popular unfolding of an authentically spiritual quest. So he's saying, like, people are, are, are going after something. They're seeking after some type of quest, yet linked with this search for the authentic knowledge of God, of this kind of inner space there's been a narrowing of vision, a desire for instant ecstasy and instant salvation. So 
there's, there's like this thing that like we want immediately to, to kind of take us to another level. I, um, was, I read an article this past week and uh, my wife thinks a lot of this stuff I read is super weird. But I, so I was reading this article about, um, there's a new kind of psychedelic drug that's taken from the poison of frogs. And it was fascinating, you're like, yeah. All right, it was fascinating um, because it was like this, the thing that was so appealing about this particular drug, it was crazy, but it's like this instant thing, immediate thing. Everyone that, all the accounts that I'm reading about this, there's like this immediate kind of ecstasy is just like brought into a new level of enlightenment. This is what we want, immediately. Uh, he, he goes on to say, there's a narrowing of vision, a desire for instant ecstasy, an instant salvation. It says, it is the, the quest for the correct method, the right mantra, the shortcut, which brings insight, which has marked so much of the recent spiritual undergrowth. Spiritual formation is a process. It takes time. I have a, a 10-year-old daughter and a three-year-old, uh, a three-year-old little boy. My daughter's name is Claire. My son's name is Judson. Um, there, there's a, a process of growth that they go through that both Katie and I, like we expect them to kind of go through this uh, growth of, of process, right? Like, like it would be strength. Like if, say I go and lay my three-year-old down and uh, I lay him down and I lay him down again and I lay him down again because this is just what you do when you're a parent and you just lay him down again. You're really tired by the time you get done with this process. But say I get him down and then I get to chill and then uh, we go to bed and, and, and I wake up in the morning. You know what I don't expect when I wake up in the morning? I, I don't expect to come out of my bedroom, uh, see my son sitting on the couch, drinking a cup of coffee and watching CNN. Right, scratching his belly. But what, that, for mate, like, that doesn't happen that way. Like, he's gonna be uh, in bed or already in our bed at that point, right? Like, like this is, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. It's, it's no matter how much I wanna kind of rush that thing, and I do want to rush that thing, my kids are at the age that they are. And it takes time and work. This is, um, this is spiritual formation. Look what the scriptures say about this process of growth. You can write these down. They won't be on the screen, but Psalm 92, 12, the author says this, the, the righteous thrive like a palm tree and grow like a cedar tree in Lebanon. See this imagery? Slow kind of growth. Ephesians 2, 21, uh, the whole building being put together by him grows into a holy sanctuary in the Lord. Colossians 1, 10, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of him. See, all of this imagery for, for spiritual formation has this idea of slow and steady growth. Slow and steady, slow and steady growth. It's, it's these small movements. I, I'm reading this book last week called Atomic Habits. Has anyone read this before? I got my habit formation book. And, uh, and, and the whole premise of the book is like, uh, really, if you want to kind of change habits, you, um, you, you have to basically, it's a lot of just kind of small decisions every day that, that eventually lead to a, a type of growth and maturity that you're seeking to, to find in whatever particular area that you're going after. And so I just remember reading this book and they're, they're kind of giving all of these, um, you know, all these different, like if you want to uh, become a runner, you sit your shoes out in front of your door in your running clothes, right? It's just these little small kind of cues that you operate in. And I just thought, man, that's so much like our spiritual growth and spiritual formation. It's just this little bitty, kind of little bitty things that are happening over and over and over again. Okay, so looking back at our definition. So spiritual formation is a process. So why is it so, um, why is it so difficult for us? It's because it's a process that is slow, involves our work. Second question, second question, why is active participation in spiritual formation important? So why should you, if, you, if you're someone who identifies as a follower of Christ, why should you care about this series, the next few weeks? Why should you care about spiritual formation in general? The reason that you should care about spiritual formation, the reason you should care about involving yourself in spiritual formation is this. You are, I am, we collectively, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, are every single day being formed by something. There is not a person in the room that could say to me, I am not being formed by something. 
by someone, by some system, some ideology. None of us have the option to say, I am not being formed. The option that you have is to determine whether you will actively hear this, whether you will actively participate in your formation, or you will sit back and unknowingly be formed by something else. It's true. This is, this is true. I mean, think, let's, listen, what, um, listen what Paul says. This is Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, um, verse 2. He says this, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? So that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Now, see what he says there. If you're looking at this um, in some depth there, he says what? Do not be what? Do not be conformed. He's saying, you are being formed in this age. And he says, your option is, if you don't want to be formed in this age, you should be transformed. Transformed by the renewal of your mind. Think about all the things. Here's a couple of things that form us, right? I just kind of made a list. Because I, I spend a significant amount of time with my counselor, Getting underneath what forms me, right? Like this, it's like, yes. All right, here they are. I love you, mom. All right, so here's the things that form us. Our false selves form us. Base level here. Uh, scripture teaches us that all of us are, are born with a kind of innate sinful desire or, or sin nature that exists. That's just true. Like it, it's just there. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, go to any preschool that exists anywhere and just spend a few minutes there and you will see it on full display. You just will. Just base kind of level, we are being formed by our false selves. Um, the, the faster that you realize, like your spiritual maturity will grow exponentially if you'll realize that one of your greatest enemies is yourself. Your spiritual maturity will explode. If you just recognize, oh man, Paul talks about it. He says, man, I have this flesh that keeps me. Romans 8, I have this flesh that keeps me from doing what I want to do. And I do do the things I don't want to do while I don't do the things I in myself want to do. He says, oh, help. Like, oh, is me. He says, this flesh I have, who will free me? It's Jesus. It's our flesh and our spirits inside of us. So our false selves form us. Our family of origin forms us, shapes us. Some of you come from really healthy families. Your family of origin is really healthy and, and it's incredible. That's a, that is a gift, right? That's a gift. But some of you come from really unhealthy families, broken families. And, and you're, you're, you're kind of living out of um, the, the ways that you've been formed from your family of origin. So you're, the things you think about yourself, the actions that you take, the way you operate in relationships have been formed by your family of origin. The, the older that I get, I can remember when, when so when Kay and I first got married, um, we're coming up on 15 years. And um, when we first got married, like that, we just continue to have this like conflict. All, there's a constant conflict all the time. Like just uh, back and forth. We, we don't have it anymore. So, um, but it's like, man, what's going on? Like I'm saying something and she's not receiving it. And, and uh, she's saying something and I'm not receiving it. And it's like, this just like war that's going, it's like waging war in our household. Um, I was like, what's happening? And, and what I began to realize, like, oh, shoot. I was like, I'm operating the way that I've always been operating inside of my family. Katie's operating the way that she's always operated inside of her family. And our families operate pretty different. And you begin that work of, of kicking back and going, okay, this is not, right? Good or bad. This is the ways that we've been formed by our family of origin. Uh, we're, formed by, uh, we're formed by social media. Formation in our day and age in 2022 has, has been monetized. And where there is money involved, you can be guaranteed that there is a system out to form you with certain desires, with certain habits, and certain values. Everything that you look at, listen to, expose yourself to is doing a type of formation to you that you may not even realize. 
we are, I don't know if I want to get all into this, but um, we are not being sold a product anymore. We are the product. We're the product. It's not by this particular thing. That's not, that's not so much the truth anymore. By, by this thing, it will be really helpful and great. It is now, hey, I have a group of um, white men, age 37, middle class, lives in Boston, who wants them. We're the product. And we're being formed. And we're being shaped. That's what's happening. Social media. We, we have the, the value system of our world. Uh, in our world, our, our worth is based on what? It's based on our accomplishments, our possessions, our uh, intellectual acumen, our gifts. That's our, our worth now, is it not? Our worth is like, especially in Boston, it's like, hey, um, if, if you want to have worth in Boston, it's like, roll me through your kind of educational background. Because I'm in this program right now that will blow your mind. This is the worth according to the, the value system of our world. And finally, we're, we're formed by a false religious system. So, so maybe you grew up in kind of a, uh, what we call like a fundamentalist background where, where God was like judge, cop, and executor. So you know you're gonna show up every Sunday and the, the pastor's gonna bring some kind of strong word that's gonna make you feel pretty bad and you, you just, you wanna get saved every Sunday, right? You've been baptized a thousand times. Now that was kind of the background. There's this, this, this kind of law-based background. Or, or maybe you were on the other side and, and you grew up in a church and it was all about affirmation and love and very, very little about Jesus. Very, very little about truth in the scriptures. See, these things have formed us. Maybe you, you didn't grow up in church and you've just seen kind of religious systems from afar. You've seen the loudest voices and there are some loud voices some loud religious voices. And you've said, if that's what Christianity is, I'm not interested. And you, you've been formed in such a way that you're, you've backed away from uh, being in a community of people that follow the way of Jesus. All of these things form us. C.S. Lewis said it this way. C.S. Lewis wrote, uh, Mere Christianity, um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, um, it, all of these in incredible books, uh, screw tape letters. Th this is what he says. He says this, uh, every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses, into something a little different from what it was before. And taking your life as a whole with all of your innumerable choices, all your life long, you are slowly turning the central thing either into a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature. Either into a, a creature that is in harmony with God and with other creatures, that's important, and with self, or else into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is, it is joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other means madness and horror and eternal loneliness. And he says this, each of us at each moment is progressing to one state or the other. One state or the other. You see, thoughtful, careful, spiritual formation. I want you to hear this thoughtful, careful, extensive spiritual formation is not limited to the, the religious elite. You do not, hear me, you do not have the option to sit back. If you're someone walking in the way of Jesus, hey, if you're here, you're not a follower of Christ, you're not in the way of Jesus, you get a total pass. But if you're someone saying you, you wanna live and walk in the way of Jesus, you do not have the option to say, I'm not going to involve myself in extensive, careful, thoughtful, spiritual formation. You've been called to it. You've been called to it. That's what it's calling us to. That's what it looks like. So, um, how, how does this happen? Let's get ground level for a second. And this is, this is in a lot of ways what we'll be talking about over the next few, uh, over the next few weeks together. Um, how does this happen? You can go ahead and throw the um, graphic up on the screen. Okay, so say we were to sit down and uh, 
uh, we were gonna sit down over a nice flat white or whatever. And uh, we were kind of talking about where you're at in your spiritual journey and your life. And um, this is kind of what I'm looking at when, when we're meeting. If, I, if I'm trying to think, okay, is spiritual formation happen, happening? Is maturity happening? Is Christian discipleship happening? Um, here's how I tend to think about it. Here's how our church at Grace City tends to think about it. I just want you to know up front, this is kind of where we're at. Uh, let's run through these quickly. Uh, the first one is the habits. Maybe uh, you've heard them as spiritual disciplines, uh, the practices. Uh, we just call them habits. You know, you can call them spiritual disciplines. I, like that feels a little too spiritually heady for me. I mean, let's just take it ground level. They're habits that you got to work into the rhythm of your life. That's what they are. It's prayer and scripture and um, silence and solitude and fasting it's generosity, it's Sabbath. I can't wait to get to Sabbath in the city of Boston, right? This is what the habits are. This is what we're called to. This is what we see Jesus giving us as an example, right? Again, we're asking the question, who am I becoming? Who am I becoming? So it's the habits. The second thing I'm looking for is what type of community are you finding yourself in? Are you in real, genuine, authentic community with other people? Are you in this kind of like faux community where there's like partial transparency? Do you know what I mean? Are you fully known by community? Are, are you in a house church? Are you in discipleship? Are, are you just, do you just have a community of people around you? This is what I'm looking for. Are you plugged in? You're plugged into our community. You're here. And then the third thing I'm looking for is mission. Are you, it's not limited to uh, it's important to say like, okay, I want to get connected in Grace City. I want to um, help with kids. I want to help with house churches. I want to help with um, all, all kinds of various things here. Whatever you're like, I'll set up. I'll do whatever I need to. That, that's an important thing. And that's a part of being on mission. But I'm also looking at, um, are you the type of person, whether you're in college, whether you're working full-time, whatever your situation is, are you someone that's, that's actively participating in the way of Jesus where you f- live, work, and play? where you live, work, and play? Are you sharing the gospel? Are you leading Bible studies? Maybe you're leading a prayer guide, whatever that is. Like, do you have these kind of relationships that, that you're now living on mission, using your gift set? That's one of the things we wanna help you do as a church. It's gonna help you kind of work these things into that. So I'm, I'm looking um, at all of these things with kind of the end goal of, uh, you can go to the next one. Uh, essentially the end goal for me is All of these things, when we're hitting all of these things, this is what it means to be in the image of Christ. So maybe this is a helpful thing. Maybe you draw this if you're um, a drawer, you take notes, right? And here's what I want you to do over um, over the before we get back here on a Sunday. Maybe you can go through this because you can actually chart your kind of Christian discipleship based on this, and you can say, okay, I'm pretty strong here, and you can just put a dot there. And you you, maybe you're like, man, I'm 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 doing pretty well with habits and community, and so you're in that kind of section. Right? Or maybe you're like, I'm doing pretty well, good about living uh, kind of on mission and I'm in community with people, but I'm doing terrible on the habits. You put yourself there. And, and then as you're kind of looking at it and kind of processing where you're at in your spiritual kind of growth, you could just go, okay, I need to figure out, we're gonna do five weeks on the habits, uh, three weeks on community and three weeks on mission. And depending on where you're on the spectrum, you're like, maybe I need to lean hard into those particular areas because I struggle there. Does that make making sense there? Okay, final thing here, and here's the, um, here's the end. So that's how we're gonna do it, or how we understand it, it goes out. Um, what does, um, what, what's the end goal of formation, or what good is formation? I'm gonna give you another quote. This is by a guy named Dallas Willard. Uh, Dallas Willard is like a formation mastermind. This is what he says about Christian uh, spiritual formation. He says, Christian spiritual formation is the process, so there's that word again, is the process through which the, um, in, uh, the embodied and reflective will takes on the character of Christ's will. Okay, here it is. So th- this is good, but I need you to hang in there for a second because we're gonna flesh this out a bit. So Willard would say that, that um, the will, the heart, and the spirit, all the, basically all the same thing. He would identify these as all the same thing in each person. Good? So the will is that. And then out of that, he would flesh out and say, okay, there are three types of will, wills that exist in a person. He, he would say the first will he would call the impulsive will or the vital will. He, he would say that this will is um, outwardly directed. It's moved by and, and toward things that are simply attractive. So this is like a baby, right? A baby does what? 
Its will is, I'm attracted to that. I want to grab that. I, I need that. This is, uh, this is the impulsive will. This, is, this will basically makes its decisions based on um, what pleases me or, or what I want to do. That's the, that's the vital or the, the impulsive will. It is going after what I want or what pleases me. Now, here's the thing. If you have a kid, a, a, a child, you very much want them to move out of this stage, right? There are grown adults. I would say the cultural norm of making decisions in kind of our day and time is what pleases me and what I want to do. And, and Willard says that is, that is the impulsive will. And he actually says, it's, it's interesting, he makes a distinction between there uh, hang in here, you got to get this. He says that really the impulsive will or the vital will, he would say um, when it's unhealthy, it, it becomes tightly associated with the individual. When in reality, the impulsive will should be in subordination to the person as a whole. That we have to move past, especially if we identify as a follower of Christ. We have to move past what pleases me and what I want to. Listen, making all of your decisions based on what pleases me or what I want to is never a reason alone to make that decision. The second thing he talks about is something called the reflective will. The reflective will is essentially directed towards um, what is good for the person as a, as a whole, not what is merely desired. This is the reflective will, right? So, so we have this conflict inside of us as human beings, right? Between the good and the bad and the, and the good and the not so good, the, the good and the, the, the better. Like this conflict continues to go on, this conflict between the impulsive and the reflective will. There's a, a fight here. That, that this, is, this is kind of what is happening. And, and so what he says is, um, as, a, as you mature, as a follower of Christ, what you do is you bring the reflective will Almost done, hang in. You bring the reflective will. You, you begin to kind of add in the instructions of God. You bring in the person of Christ. You, you bring in the church. And you begin to make decisions and be moved by all of these things as you're reflecting on the decisions that you will make. It's not impulsive, it is reflective. All right, so go back to his definition. Back into his um, definition, he says, uh, he, he talks about something called the embodied will. This is what the embodied will is. This is genius. He says, the embodied will is where one of the other two, either the impulsive or the reflective, has sunk down into your body to such an extent that you automatically do what they dictate. That you automatically do what they dictate. Take, um, take Peter's denial. He was, Peter was an early church leader. Um, if you don't know much about Peter, uh, Jesus has um, been arrested. He's on his way to um, the crucifixion. And there's a little girl that asked Peter if she's a part of um, the followers of, of Jesus. And, and Peter adamantly is like, nah, no, I'm not. Actually, three times he does it. That is a, a, an evil part of his uh, embodied will. He didn't think about it. It was immediate, Right? It's immediate. That's what the, that's what the in, embodied will is in that moment. Or, or, or we can take it even more level. Say you leave here today and you go out on the street and someone almost runs you over, uh, which happens a lot, almost runs you over, right? Your embodied will, in, in that moment, I could, I could almost guarantee, in that moment you didn't go, you didn't like, they almost hit you. You didn't go, oh, what should I do? Hey, idiot, right? Like it probably just came out, you know? Like you're just like, you either like explode in that moment or maybe you're healthier than I am. And you're like, okay, that's the embodied will, right? It's just, it's right under the surface. This is what Willard says. This is good. This is good news for God's people. Willard says that spiritual formation, what it does, what all this does is it, it turns itself so much so that your embodied will, 
This thing is sunk down in, this reflective kind of will that's sunk down in by default does in a lot of ways what Jesus would have you do. There's a pro, not, listen, not that you reach perfection, not that you don't have um, past brokenness and habits that we are continually seeking to, to grow past and, and surrender to and or, or surrender kind of um, allegiance to those things too. Not that we don't have to ever think about our decisions, but he says that as you walk on this path of spiritual formation, this can happen for you. He says, as you walk this path of spiritual formation, there's a type of maturity that this conformity to the image of Christ just comes natural to you. Now, uh, Mulholland, um, Mulholland ends his definition by saying that spiritual formation is a process of being formed into the image of Jesus for the sake of others. You see, your spiritual formation is not even primarily about you. It's not. Can you imagine, just for a moment, what it would look like if we as a church, as the people seeking to follow the way of Jesus, did, did the hard work, right? Lean into the transformation of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Did our part in the effort to say, I'm gonna commit myself to, to walking this process of spiritual formation. So much so to where our embodied will begins to, to act and operate as Jesus would call us to act and operate. Can you imagine the influence that that would have on the city of Boston? At your work, on the college campuses, all over the place. This is, this is the, the question we wanna ask is, what, what type of person am I becoming? What type of people are we becoming? Maybe you're here, you've never trusted Christ. So maybe this morning you need to give your life to him. You've been tossed back and forth. Maybe today you, just, you can check on that card. Hey, I would love to talk about what it means to trust Jesus. We'll have people that'll be up front when we dismiss. You can come talk. Maybe you're here and you're a follower of Christ. And you're like, God, man, I have been, um, especially if maybe you're coming back from the break and you're like, I've been on cruise control. Just been drifting. Maybe if you're like, okay, I need to commit into this thing. I need to lean heavy into the next few weeks together.